if two polygons are similar, then the ratio of their perimeters is equal to the ratio of the side lengths. And if you think about it, that, that should make sense in a way because the perimeter is just adding up the sides. So if I'm adding up the sides of the one polygon and I'm adding up the sides of the other, their ratios should stay the same between the sides and the perimeters. So if the sides ratio is x over y, then the perimeter ratio is x over y. Okay, so they'll match. If they're similar and we have their side ratio is x over y, their area ratio that's a y is squared. Okay, so if you think about that kind of makes sense too because like with perimeter we're just adding up all the sides but with area we're getting square units and so if the ratio of their sides is just normal, then when we find the areas, it would square it. So to remember, square the ratio, you can remember area is square units. Everything squared, 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 squared. Alright, so here we have two similar rectangles. Okay, if we want to look at the um, ratio of their sides, we have a 3 to 2. And the way we figure that out is I have 3 over 2 and I have 9 over 6. And when I reduce 9 over 6, it equals 3 to 2, so we use the reduced ratio. <coughs> so the ratio of the perimeters, okay, well, the perimeter of the large one is going to be 9 plus, or 2 times 9, which is 18, plus 2 times 3, which is 6. So that is um, 24. And the ratio of the small one, I have 12 plus 4, which is 16. And if I reduce that, I also get 3 over 2. So they match. And then the ratio of the areas, the area of the large rectangle is 27, you know, 3 times 9, and the area of the small one is 12. And if I, um, if I reduce these, they both divide by 3. And I get 9 over 4. Well, 9 over 4 is 3 halves squared. Because 3 squared is 9 and 2 squared is 4. So you can see that the ratio of the areas is the square of the ratio of the sides. So far okay? Like, you guys believe me now? Any questions on that? So sometimes you're going to get problems like this where they say, okay, the ratio of the sides is 3x and to, or 3 to 5, and the area is 81 square units, and we want to find that's the smaller square. So, you know, small, and this is large. Okay. And the smaller square is 81 square units, so we want to find the area of the larger square. Okay. Well, the side ratio, I'm going to put this in a fraction form, is 3 to 5. So the area ratio is 3 to 5 squared, so that makes it 9 over 25. Okay, so that's our ratio. We know the area of the small square is 81. We want to find the area of the big square. So I set up a proportion and I'm going to cross multiply. So I'll have 9x is equal to, I did not memorize my 25s or my 81s. Okay, 2025. And then divide both sides by 9. And I'm going to get 225. 
square units. Okay. So I was able to figure out, again, just by taking the ratio of the sides, squaring it so I knew it was area ratio, and then setting a proportion, small on top, on both sides, and then large on the bottom. Or you could have flipped that, and you could put large. You could have done 25 over 9, but then you would have to do x over 81. Just make sure small is always on top, or small is always on bottom. I mean, just make sure they're on the same side. Good? And then the other thing that you'll have to do with these is fill out these lovely tables. This is very easy. These will always match. These two columns always match because the perimeters and the side ratios are the same, right? So very easy to fill out this part. Okay. The ratio of the area is the square of the ratio of the sides, so I square it. Okay. If I'm given the ratio of the areas, I have to take the square root of each of them. So square root of 81 is 9, square root of 169 is 13. So this would be 9 to 13. And then again, I'm going to square these. So I'll just write down um, 3 squared. Four squared. So when we look back at this later, it'll be easy. Okay. And then these two columns are always going to be the same. All right, diameter. We've already talked about this when we talked about circles. But diameter is the cord that passes through the center of the circle. Here's a, my beautiful, perfectly drawn circle, and I'm sure this is exactly dead center and my diameter is a nice straight line that passes through the center of the circle. Picture a Pokemon ball. Anyway, um, the circumference is the distance around the outside of the circle, whatever this length is. Okay. Basically, the circumference is like the perimeter of, a, perimeter of a circle. The perimeter is, the definition is the length of all the sides added up, and circles only have the one side. So it's the length around the outside. Okay, and then we talk about pi. Pi is probably one of the most famous mathematical constants because even non-math people know pi, right? And pi is approximately 3.14159, but we always just generally say use 3.14. Pi day is March 14th. Remember this last year we had the ultimate pi day? we had March 14th, 2015 at 9 a.m. Actually, it was 9.23 because the next two digits are two. So it was ultimate pie day, which will not happen again for another 100 years. So anyway, um, also in Europe, they celebrate pie day on July 22nd because 22 over 7 is 3.14. Anyway. Pi is a very special number that is derived from circles, and it is unique because it doesn't matter what size circle, pi is always the same, and we can calculate it using any circle. Okay, so all circles have the ra same ratio of the circumference to the diameter. You want to know what that ratio is? So basically, if you take the circumference and you divide it by the diameter, you get 3.14, always. Um, in a circle, the ratio of the arc length to the circumference is e equal to the ratio of the degree measure of the arc to 360. So if we take arc length over circumference, it's the same thing as arc measurement over 360. And so we can find that chunk of, we can find the length of any piece of a chunk of a circle using this ratio. Okay, the other way you can do it is you can take the circumference and you can multiply it by 
the measure of the arc length divided by 360. And that will give you the length of the arc. So it, it depends on, do you like to work with like making a decimal and then multiplying it by things, or do you prefer to do like the cross-multiplying proportion? You get the same answer either way. All right, so let's look at, here we go. The mathematical constant pi is an irrational number. Irrational means it never ends and it never repeats. Okay, and it is approximately equal to 3.14159, but we'll just use 3.14, which is the ratio of the circle's circumference to its diameter. So again, remember, radius halfway from the center, diameter is all the way across through the center, circumference goes around the outside. Okay, the circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, where r is the length of the radius. The other thing we can use, so you can use circumference is 2 pi r, or you can use circumference is pi b. They're the same thing. Because 2 times the radius is the diameter. Um, so if you have the diameter, multiply it by pi. If you have the radius, multiply it by 2 and multiply it by pi. So they look different, but these are the same. Um, 2 pi r is commonly used, I think, because when you get into area of a circle, the area of a circle is pi r squared. So if you have pi r squared and 2 pi r, you have the exact same 3 variables and number rearranged differently. And so it's kind of like, hmm, fancy. Now when we talk about the length of the arc, okay, so this is where I wrote down circumference before. The arc length, L, is not the measure of the arc itself, but we're talking about the actual length of this little piece of the circle. So the physical length of that chunk. So that divided by the circumference is equal to the angle measure divided by 360. And if you think about that, it makes sense, right? Because we're talking about a little piece divided by the whole thing of the outside. And then if you're talking about the angles, I have a little piece divided by the whole thing. Does that make sense? Okay, so that's where that comes from. Or again... I can take the circumference and multiply it by m divided by 360. Oops, 2 pi r. I forgot the r. You get l. Example. I am going to find the length of that red bit, provided that this is 3 something. Want to call it inches? Okay, let's call it inches. That is three inches, now I'm going to find the length of the red bit. So step one, I have to find the circumference. And the circumference is 2 pi r. So I have 2 times pi times 3, so 6 pi. And if you're told to leave it in pi, or in terms of pi, you just leave it like this. Um, if you're told to round it, then you multiply it by 3.14, which gives me approximately 18.84, okay? The 6 pi is the most accurate answer because pi never ends and repeats, so we're rounding. Yeah, this is an estimate. This is accurate. First step, find the circumference. Step two, we can either do the ratio, or not ratio, proportion. Sorry, let me erase that. Proportion, we're using two ratios. Or we can do the percent. Okay, there's the two methods. Pick one. Okay, I'm gonna do both. You take the one you like and run with it. 
Okay, if we do the proportion, we have the arc length over the circumference is equal to m over 360. And if we do the percent, we have the circumference times m over 360 equals l. So pick which, pick which one you like. Um, we don't know the arc length. I know the circumference is 6 pi. I have 120 over 360. I can reduce this. 120 over 360 reduces very easily. If I knock the zeros off, I have 12 over 36. Basically, I divided both by 10. And then 12 and 36 both divide by 12. So I can make that one third. So far, everybody following why I would want to do that? Because my next step is going to be to cross multiply, and I would much rather multiply by 3 than by 360. So I get 3L is equal to 6 pi. So far, okay. And I divide by th sides by 3, and I get that L is 2 pi. Now, if I had not reduced, which you don't have to, I'd get uh, 360L is equal to 720 pi. And I divide both sides by 360, and I get the same thing. Okay, so you don't have to reduce. You can if you want to. Now, the percent method, I take my 2 pi r, which is 6 pi, and I multiply it by 120 divided by 360. And 120 divided by 360 is going to be 0 0.3 repeating. Which is going to give me 2 pi. Or if I use the fraction reducing, 3 goes into 6 twice, 2 times 1 is 2. And again, I did all this in terms with pi still in there. If they want you to do it, like to estimate or round, you just plug 18.84 in where all these 6 pi's are and then just multiply and divide with the decimals. So far okay? All right, so let's look at this. Um, we've got a couple of examples here where we find the length of the arc based off of the circumference. And this one, we're going backwards, these two, we're going to, we have the length of the arc, and we're going to use that to find the circumference. So. Here I've got my radius again is 3, so my circumference is, and we're just going to keep everything um, in term of pi for right now. Or actually, you know what we'll do? A pi B decimal C pi D pi, because it's in pi radius. So. Okay, so that's going to be 6 pi for my circumference. Do you guys like the percent version or the proportion version better? I'll do proportion for A, percent for B. Right. So I have L over 6 pi, because that's my circumference. And then my measurement is 240 over 360. And again, I'm going to reduce this because I like to, but you don't have to. Um, take the zeros off, I immediately get 24 over 36, both of which are divisible by 4. Four, which would give me 6 over 9, which divides by 3, so I'd have 2 thirds. So I'd have 3L is equal to 12 pi, and I divide both sides by 3, so L is 4 pi. So this length in red, which should have continued all the way over to here, I don't know why it didn't, 240 degrees worth is 4 pi. So far, okay? Um, here I'm going to do decimals. So I have 2 pi r again. 
So I'm going to do 2 times 3.14 times 18. So I'm going to actually use the estimate of the decimals. So my calculator died on me. Um, 2 times 3.14 times 18 gives me 113.04 approximately. And again, this is an approximation. We don't know. It's not perfect because we're rounding. And then for my arc length, I'm going to take my circumference and I'm going to multiply it by 100 degrees divided by 360. So 100 divided by 360 gives me 0.2 with a 7 repeating. So multiply that by 113.04. And I get 31.4 for my arc length. Again, just an approximation because I don't have, I have an approximate circumference, so I have an approximate arc length. Okay, here I'm going backwards, so I know the arc length, but what I don't know is the circumference. Okay, using the proportion is probably the easier way to do these, but I'll show both ways. So we know we do the arc length over the circumference is equal to the arc measure over the whole degrees. My pi's are going to cancel, right? So pi cancels. So I have 10 over 2r. Well, 10 divided by 2 is 5. So 5 over r is equal to, and I'm going to cancel the zeros, 5 over 36. Oh, yeah, I'm finding the radius. I got confused for a second. Well, 5 over r is equal to 5 over 36. What does r have to be? 36. So, Because if I multiply this, I get 5r is equal to 5 times 36. So r is 5, I mean 36. So that tells me 36 right there. And my circumference is 2 pi r. So it's 2 times pi times 36, which makes it 72 pi. The other way, when we take the circumference and we multiply it by m over 360, and that gives me my arc length. So to go backwards, I'm going to go ahead and put in my circumference as c. And then I have 220 over 360 is equal to 11 pi. And then when I do 220 divided by 360, I get 0 0.61, and the 1 is repeating, is equal to 11 pi. And I divide both sides by 0 0.61, repeating. So proportion, percent, decimals, it, you can go both ways. You just pick the way that makes the most sense for you and use that one. Any questions on this? <coughs> Would you guys find this incredibly long arc length? The circumference is 18 pi. Um, do you want to see the proportion or do you want to see the percent version? Proportion? Okay, so I have um, L over 18 pi is equal to 340 over 360. Do you like to reduce the fractions or no? So I cross multiply, I get 360L is equal to 
6,120 pi. Divide both sides by 360, and I get 17. And if I had put multiplied by 3.14 here, I'd have a different number here, and that would give me this answer. So far okay? Um. Alright, so we want to find the perimeter of this circle, or this, sorry, track. Let's say, well, if this part's 18, then this part's also 18. I need to find this length right here. Well, that length is going to be the same as this length. And if I put those together, I'm going to have a circle. So I need to find the circumference of this circle. Does that make sense? Okay. So the circumference of the circle is 2 pi r. So 2 times pi times 9, and I'm going to go ahead and plug in the 3.14 for the pi. So I have 18 times 3.14. So that gives me 56.52. And then for the perimeter, I have that 56.52 plus the 218, which gives me 92.52. Okay, for this figure here, I'm going to take out, or not take out, but the, I've got this square, but then this side curves. If this length is 4, that makes the radius 2 or the whole diameter is 4. So the circumference of the full circle would be 4 times pi, or 4 times 3.14, which would be 12.56. But that would be for the full circle. This is only half of the circle. So. I need to divide that by 2. Which gives me 6.28. So this length here is 6.28, and then I have a 4, a 4, and a 4. So the perimeter is the 3 4s plus the 6.28, giving me 18.28. Sector is a portion of a circle bounded by two. It's, it's the pizza slice looking bit. That's the sector. So if I have a circle, this is a sector. Okay. The segment is the area bounded by a chord and the arc of a curve subpended by the chord. Okay. If I have a sector, and that's the center of the circle. And I go like that. This bit right here is the segment. So the curved part, if I take the triangle off from the sector. Okay, I have the theorem, the area of the circle is the product of pi and the radius squared. So area equals pi r squared. Okay. The area of a sector, the pi piece, is the area of the circle and the ratio of the degree. So if we take the area of the sector, we take pi r squared and we multiply it by m divided by 360. So 
basically what we're saying is here's the whole circle. Remember I said m divided by 360 is like the percent of the circle, so we multiply it by the percent. All right, finding the area of a circle, pi r squared, so our area is going to be pi times 6 squared, which will give me 36 pi. Or if I'm doing the decimal equivalent, I take 36 and I multiply it by 3.14. Hmm? 113.04. Yes. Now, if I'm doing the area of a sector, I first have to find the area of the circle, which is going to be pi times 4 squared and then 120 divided by 360. So that's 16 pi times, point three repeating. Which is gonna give me 5.3 repeating pi. Um, if we left it in terms of fractions, um, that reduces to one third, so that would be 16 thirds pi. Or if we put it in terms of decimals, um, it's going to be 16.75 when I round, because it's 16.46 repeating, so round to 75. Um, and then, of course, the whole circle is 16 pi. So far, okay? Everybody got it? All right, now to find this part, we want to find the shaded region, the segment, basically. Um, if we take the triangle out of the whole pi piece, we are left with the shaded part. So we have to find this area first, find this area second, and subtract them. Okay. Oops. All right, so what I have for the segment, I mean the sector, I have pi times 8 squared, and then I have 60 over 360. So this is 64 pi times 60 divided by 360, which is going to give me, oops, I had the wrong button, 0.16 repeating, which is going to give me 10.6 repeating pi. Or if I did it in terms of fractions, I'd have 1 over 6, so I'd have um, 32 thirds pi. Okay, but most of you guys don't like to leave things in fractions, so we'll just use the decimal, and that's okay. Now, I have to find the area of the triangle. What I have is a 60 degree triangle, so I actually, I need to turn this into two 90 degree triangles so I can do something with the length with trig because you have to have a right triangle to be able to use trig. So I'm going to draw my triangle down here. Okay. And if I cut this 60 degree angle in half, I'm going to make that better because that's not going to be clear enough. I take that 60 degree angle and I cut it in half and I do a 90 degree to the bottom. Because I have a 60 degree triangle, I have an equilateral triangle. I'm going to have a 30, 60, 90. Okay, and I know that this length is 8. And from my 30, 60, 90 pattern, my short leg is 8, my hypotenuse, sorry, my short leg is A, my hypotenuse is 2 times A, and then my long leg is a times the square root of 3. This is my short leg here. 
So I have 8, this is 4, and then this is 4 times the square root of 3. And my area of my triangle is 1 half base times height. So it's going to be 1 half of 4 times 4 root 3, which gives me 2 times 4 root 3, which gives me 8 root 3. And since we're doing decimals already, I'm going to go ahead and put that in terms of decimals. Um, so, first of all, take the square root of 3, which is 1.73205, blah, blah, blah. And I will multiply that by 8. And so I have 13.86. Okay. And so I have the area of the sector, which is 10.6 pi, and I'm subtracting the area of the triangle. Since it said to leave it in terms of pi, I can't do anything else to it. Um, if I wanted it to be really exact, like perfectly exact, it would be 32 thirds pi minus 8 root, that's a minus, minus 8 root 3. This is like perfect exact answer. If I didn't leave it in terms of pi, I would have 33.28 minus 13.86, which would give me an area of about 19.42. Here we're going to find this shaded region. Um, my circumference is pi d in this case, because I already have the diameter, so it's 24 pi. And my, um, my sector, so I'm going to take that 24 pi and I'm going to multiply it by 40 over 360. Okay. 40 divided by 360 is 0.1 repeating. So I'm going to get 2.6 pi. There I've got a larger one. My circumference is going to be 36 pi because it's 18 twice. So I take 36 pi and I multiply that by 270 over 360. Point seventy five. Multiply that by the thirty six, and I get twenty seven pi for my shaded area. Um, here I have a large segment. Remember, this is one hundred twenty degrees. So if I divide it in half, I'm going to get a sixty, thirty, ninety again. Um, so my sector is going to be my 2 pi r times m over 360, so that's um, 8 and 2 and pi times 120 over 360. 120 divided by 360 is 0.3 repeating times 16 gives me 5.3 pi for the whole sector and now I have to subtract the triangle. So I'm going to draw the triangle over here. The half, this is one half the triangle. Okay. If this is 8, that makes this height right here 4. And then this part is 4 root 3 from, yeah, 4 root 3. But there's two of these. 
So this is 4 root 3, and this is 4 root 3. So my area of my triangle is 8 root 3 times 4 divided by 2, which gives me 16 root 3. And so the area of the shaded part is 5.3 pi minus 16 root 3. And I can just leave it like that because it said to leave my answers in terms of pi, and so I can't combine those. And last but not least, we have this lovely circle inside of a square. So first I have to find the area of the square. That part's really hard, 36. And then I have to find the area of the circle. Well, if this length here is 6, then this length here is also 6. So it's 6 pi. And so the area of the shaded part is the square minus the circle. And since it said to leave it in terms of pi, I can't combine those numbers. So Any questions at all? Okay, your homework is pages... Um, 